Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series of the Advanced VR Framework version 3. In this episode, I want to talk about the maps. The framework supports both the variant for a 2D and a 3D map. Up here I have an example for a 2D map. So you can see this little dot right here, which is representing myself. It turns wherever I turn, and it being positioned wherever I'm positioned. And we also have this little cube icon here. This is representing this cube, so if I move it around, you can see that it moves around the space. We also have this little 3D map here, which is basically a miniature version of the of uh, meshes that we want to have dedicated. So if I move around this cube, you can see that the cube also exists in this miniature version here. In this way, you can kind of create your own little 3D environment of uh, selected mes mes meshes. To explain how that, uh, the floor plans work, I'm going to let myself from the past explain that for me. So the first thing you have to do is place a floor plan measurement helper under the part of the map that we want to cover. To track the movement of the actors, we developed a map location component. We attach this component to every actor in the, a map that we want to have on our minimap. Our minimap then uses a floor plan measurement helper to translate the real world coordinates sent by the map location components into relative coordinates. These relative coordinates can then be used uh, to display the map, uh, the, uh, the actors on the map uh, accordingly. So let's recap. First, we place a floor plan measurement helper under the part of the map that we want to cover. Second, we attach a map location component to every actor on the map. You can also revisit the complete video. The setup of the floor plans have only slightly changed. But I will go over that again. So let us set up the maps in the editor. So we already created a mini map example of how um, a floor plan could be created. You see here that we have our example of a 3D map, of a 2D map, and basically another 2D map in just a different skin. So obviously, since it's a widget, it can be embedded into any kind of element. And uh, so we have a representation of two different kinds of um, 2D maps. And um, if you're curious why these guys don't move, I don't exactly know. It seems to be a problem of Unreal that the uh, mesh uh, doesn't rebuild itself immediately. So just just moves the mesh around. Then you see you see them uh, see the guys strutting around again, and uh, yeah, you can see the example of a three D map, uh, map, which is basically just duplicating every every mesh and is uh, trying to imitate the position, and um, the the more abstract form is the two D map, where you actually have uh, guys running around and little symbols representing the different elements. And if you if you move the elements, then you see that the S symbol is moving as well. Okay, perfect. So how do we set this up? Um, again, if you need any reminder, this is a very good example of how to, how to do this. Um, we basically have a floor plan uh, measurement uh, down here, and um, this has to be placed underneath the world of the, the frame that you want to uh, cover. And um, I think it's easiest if we try to explain that on a new example in a new map. So um, let me switch into a, diff a, a more simpler map. So now that we have an empty level, um, we can start by putting a floor plan measurement. In. The floor plan measurement should basically cover the whole area that um it should be relevant to the minimap. So I'm just gonna scale it up a bit and or maybe not maybe not that much. And we can start by putting a texture in. So if I have one just of a floor plan, I'll simply take that one. Um which is not the most beautiful one. I I reckon that if you do an Arcus project or uh, any other kind of project where you actually require a mini map, then uh, you you bought it, probably have better tools to create your own texture. But uh, we're going to do with this texture at the moment. If 
Um, the texture during our development is kind of annoying us. We can also set the visibility of it. And very important, we have to set a name. Um, this name will be used to reference this floor plan. And then to display our floor plan, we have to have an, uh, a widget which is actually using our flow plan and for that we are just going to use a palette, the palette large, for example, just to see our results. And as this palette we can uh, we can say that it's supposed to be not using the menu but the palette map palette initial map. And now if we had play we see that this palette initial uh, this uh, widget is already using this floor plan here. And now it's all about just placing some actors in the floor plan. And um, to do that, we can simply take ourselves some, some example content. And I will take, for example, the cube because I always take the cubes. Um, one cube here. Very important is also like this should maybe be placed below so we we can see it properly. And um now we can place our cube in the world and this cube has to have a map location a map location component. Basically only Actors with the map location components are relevant for um for floor plans for our mini maps, and here we can set a few a, a few uh, parameters. So first of all, um we want to give this cube um a texture on the mini map because otherwise it doesn't know what to look like. I'm just going to give it, for example, this um this texture here um, we could also give it a text and a translation table for the text but um, i don't think that's very necessary because the text is also very very small um, so let us give it a size i would simply take 100 by 100 you can look at the floor plan and see whether that uh, size actually works for you and the substitute material is only important for this 3d map um, we can define whether not only the location but also rotation and scale should be relevant and um, we don't want uh, the icon to be rotating uh, when the cube is rotating so uh, we can we can turn those both off. Um, use floor is, means that it should um, only be relevant when it's inside this box. I will give you an example of that right now. And just quickly, the last example is um, whether it should be relevant for a 2D and a 3D map. Not every time you, you want everything to be relevant for both, especially if it's things like environment, you don't want the environment elements to be visible on a 3D map or on a 2D map, depending. And uh, yeah, now if we hit play, we can already see that we have our uh, cube with our icon here. And um, this cube is actually not movable. I uh, I have forgotten to to set it to movable, and if we hit a play again, we can see that it's being moved around. We can also see that it disappears as soon as it moves up. That is because it leaves this uh, this box. So this box is this box of relevance. We have one for this 2D map and one for 3D map. And uh, if I scale this box up, then we can see that the cube stays relevant for much longer. So it, as long as it's inside this sphere, it stays relevant for the floor plan. Another thing is uh, that uh, we had this parameter use floor. So if it doesn't use floor, it always stays relevant no matter how high it goes. Okay, perfect. So this is basically all you need to know for the 2D maps. Um, this is 
actually as simple as I can imagine it uh, to be getting. So basically, just to recap, just put a map location component on every locate uh, on every actor that you want to have visible on the floor plan. Um, put a floor plan measurement underneath uh, your area, and uh, make sure that if you want uh, a limitation in the in the z axis, that uh, everything is covered by this cube, everything you want to have relevant is being covered by this cube. Okay, so now let's switch up to the 3D maps. So to cover the 3D maps, they are basically very similar to the 2D maps, as in it's just a, uh, just the same setup. The, the only requirements that we need is somewhere to visualize that. So um, for the 3D maps, we have this child actor component 3 map and the child actor component is, is just called that way because it is meant to be used as a component but of course since they are actors you can also just put them in the world directly and if we put that ad in the world we can see that if we hit play not much is happening right now that is because of two things um we first have to assign a floor plan um, the which floor plan measurement is actually relevant to the three D actor? So I'm just going to select the, uh, this one. So now this floor plan, uh, this three D map knows that it's supposed to be listening to this floor plan. And now if we hit play, you can see that this is all distorted. That is because the the scale of this floor plan is not according to the scale. So they need to be both in relative scale. So I'll just copy the scale of our floor plan and paste it onto the scale of our destination floor plan. And now it basically has the same size, but if I scale it down, we can see that we have it proportionately to, to this floor plan. And now the cube also has a proportionate size. And on the cube itself, we can give a substitute material, for example, a ghost material and um, just to make it a bit more visual I'm going to give this physics and I'm going to duplicate that a bunch of times and now if we play you can see that we have our little representation over here and if we move them around they move around accordingly. Notice they are also on this floor plan. And um, if you if you give this 3D map a bit of an around, a surrounding, if you put it in inside a mesh, as I put it on on this display, then you can just uh, create your own little 3D environments of a uh, representing of the of the real real 3D world. Okay, I, I hope that wasn't too confusing because the setup of floor plans, I find it very easy actually. Just put in the floor plan measurement, um, put in a map location component on everything you want to have uh, represented and either um, use a floor plan widget or use a floor plan actor to uh, create your representation inside the world. Okay, um, I hope you... I uh, like this episode on our mini maps and I will see you in the next episode.